Welcome to the new session on molecular biology. In this presentation, we will be looking into the concept of non-coding RNAs. Non-coding RNAs, it is the term it is uh, commonly employed for those RNAs that does not code for any protein. But this does not mean that uh, these RNAs don't have any uh, function or they do not contain any information, but these two RNAs, they do have regulatory functions and one of the most common and uh, widely studied, well studied uh, non-coding RNAs, they include rRNAs, tRNAs, uh, small nuclear RNAs or small nuclear RNAs. All these RNAs are non-coding RNAs in the sense they don't get, uh, they, does, they do not encode any protein. Okay. So I hope that part is clear. Right. So the non-coding RNAs, they include rRNAs and tRNAs which get involved in um, the translation process. The small nuclear RNAs or what we refer as the snRNAs that are involved in splicing, RNA splicing and small nucleolar RNAs that are involved in the modification of the ribosomal RNAs. Apart from these, in this presentation, we will be focusing more on the small non-coding RNAs which do have very important role in regulation of the uh, expression of the genes. But like they are regulatory RNAs but non-coding in they are not going to get translated. So these small non-coding RNA, it is a type of non-coding RNA with low abundance, present in low, lower number, and usually the length is less than 200 bases. RNA it is a, obviously single strand helix, it is in bases, which regulate these non-coding RNAs usually regulate the translation of the target messenger RNA. In the sense they are highly specific. So to regulate the post-transcription modification of the gene or to regulate the uh, gene expression later to transcription process, the, these non-coding RNAs, they may bind to the target site of the regulated gene that is on the DNA or they may cleave the gene transcript. So uh, the first one here we mentioned that is the, these non-coding RNAs they bind to the target site of the regulated gene. In the sense, the gene on the DNA is getting bound by these non-coding RNAs and this binding, it will stop the transcription process itself. Right? Now, the second method or the second way is by cleavage of the gene transcript. So, the mRNA is produced by transcription process, but those mRNA transcript which is produced, it gets cleaved by these non-coding RNAs. Thirdly, they may directly affect the translation of the mRNA, the target mRNA into a protein. So it is not getting going to get cleaved, but the mRNA is intact, still it may not get translated. So these are the three methods by which these non-coding RNAs regulate the translation of the target messenger RNA or we can say regulate the expression of the gene and this thus achieving the post-transcriptional gene silencing. Okay, so what does it mean? That is post-transcription in the sense after the transcription is completed. Gene silencing in the sense that is the gene expression is repressed. Okay, and this process is what is required as RNA interference which we will be looking in detail in the coming presentation. Now, which all are the small non-coding RNA that is included under those which can regulate the uh, gene expression? They include the small interfering RNA or the SI RNA, the pi RNA or the PV interacting RNAs, micro RNA or the MI RNAs. As already mentioned, the non-coding RNAs also include the small nuclear RNA on small nuclear RNA. Now, regarding the, um, uh, the non-coding RNAs which we are supposed to learn in detail, they are SI RNA, pi RNA and MI, micro RNAs. Most of the SI RNAs are the uh, small interfering RNAs. They are produced by uh, the exogenous double-stranded RNA molecules. 
Okay, so the production of these cRNAs it is being initiated by exogenous double-stranded RNA molecules. Those RNA molecules which enter the cell from outside. Okay, so uh, it is the, uh, the uh, double-stranded RNA molecules which can trigger the formation of siRNA. They are exogenous in origin. Now, pi RNAs they are found in mammalian gonads and they are vital for the development of germ cells for the gamete. The microRNAs or the miRNAs they are produced internally, it is inside the uh, inside the cell, and also by some viruses uh, themselves. So these are the three uh, non-coding RNAs which we are more concerned with in the coming presentations. Now, what are the functions of non-coding RNA? The non-coding RNAs they participate in the regulation of many kinds of biological phenomena, including the development, uh, signal transduction cell division, apoptosis, they also promote or inhibit angiogenesis and they play a very important role in the um, occurrence and development of cancer. Obviously, carcino uh, the angiogenesis is a part of the uh, carcinogenesis, that is angiogenesis is the formation of new blood vessels which usually is triggered by, uh, during the carcinogenesis, that is cancer formation. So the, these two processes, they are being regulated by different kinds of non-coding RNAs. Uh, I hope this part is clear. Okay, so these are a few uh, non-coding RNAs uh, and uh, the mechanisms and the functions. We'll be detailing it in the coming presentations. And here you can see one of the, the um, non-coding RNA, the miRNA, they bring about the cleavage of the mRNA transcript gene transcript okay so here you can see the mRNA is produced and this is the uh, what you call a complex uh, com form of the non-coding RNA with specific proteins and these uh, complex it will bring about the cleavage of the mRNA and hence forming many uh, mRNA uh, segments which cannot undergo translation okay this is done with the help of the my uh, SIRN or small interfering RNA. Yet another type of non-coding RNA that is the uh, what you call micro RNA, they act upon the mRNA but without bringing about any cleavage, they will bring about translational repression in the sense RNA will be produced, RNA is intact but the complex formed of the micro RNA with the proteins, it will bring about translational repression. So, translation is not preceded. Okay. The mRNA remain intact. Another set of non-coding RNA it is the, the pi RNA where the pi RNA it is complex with pi Y proteins. Okay. P -I -W -I, the pi W I, pi V proteins. So, the pi V proteins and the pi RNA complex it will bring about the um, what you call regulation in mainly by way of epigenetic silencing. Epigenetic silencing here, what it referred to is these proteins, it will bring about the gene silencing uh, at the genetic level or the, at the gene level. Okay, here the silencing is at the mRNA level, that is post-transcriptional uh, gene silencing, but here it could be at the DNA level or the gene level. Okay, so that is before the, um, uh, the transcription process is completed. So these are the uh, various kinds of non-coding RNAs and in the coming presentation we will be looking into RNA interference and what are the different uh, non-coding RNAs involved in RNA interference. Okay. Okay.